Mike MDs here. Thanks for joining me. This is a 2006 BMW 5 Series. And the customer came in with the AC not operating. Uh, it was low on AC free on charge. We recharged it. The compressor is working. Everything's working. It's still blowing hot air. And these have a notorious issue for the heater valve getting jammed closed. Uh, I'm sorry, getting jammed open. And the heater valve is down in here. I'll start taking some of this stuff apart so you can see it. A lot of times if you tap it uh, with the back end of a screwdriver, it can re it, it'll open and close, it'll start activating again, and then the AC will start working. This one's completely jammed. Um, sometimes you can feel a little bit of cold air coming through the vents uh, mixed with really hot air. Uh, so this is usually the culprit. Uh, any of these models that have a heater valve or a water valve for the heater core uh, has the potential to get jammed and cause this type of issue. In this case, when interrogating the fault codes, it does have faults for the water valve uh, left and right, and that's what we're going to replace uh, here, and that will cause uh, some weird issues. The heater, heater being stuck on pretty much all the time. So today I'm going to show you how to replace it. After we replace it, we're gonna bleed the system. This has an electrical water pump. Uh, we're gonna bleed it electronically. All right, first things first, we're gonna take this air box out here to gain some access to that area down in there. All right, there's that. Screwdriver, take the clamp off down in here or just loosen it. And it has a little sensor I wouldn't pull on it, you can pull the wires out, but if you can just kind of get it on the edge and pop it off just like that, it comes off. Twist it, piece of cake on that end. And then next we're gonna take this portion of the induction boot off, has this thing attached to it, it's kind of one piece. This one's a little more challenging, the hose clamp is down in here. I kind of moved these out of the way, someone already moved them. And then you can get under here with a little socket and a small wrench. So I use a quarter inch ratchet. Uh, you can use a little extension or not, whatever suits you best. And this is a six millimeter socket here. And you just have to loosen it. You don't have to take it all the way off, just like that. And that's what it looks like. It's down, of course it's facing down, but you can get your hand in there. It's not too big of a deal. This is an alignment dowel section and it matches the throttle body there's a little cutout so you can't really mess that up all right this thing here is the water valve so i'm going to take the electrical connection off it has a little pinch tab you pinch it use two hands pull up on the harness while you pull up on the connector there it is there just like that maybe don't buy a cheap pair look at i just broke these ones these are Matco too. Just bought them not too long ago. All right, we're gonna try these ones. All right, there's one hose off. Try to remember where they go, of course. When you go back together, the curvy one is at the bottom. and I'm going to put the new valve on it to stop some of that water from coming out there go there it is alright now to secure the clamps Okay, I got all the hoses on here. The curved one goes there, there on the bottom. Here's a picture for you for reference. And if you look, it has a little hook right here at the bottom of this valve. That's gonna seat down in here. It's like a little grommet. And the top two here are gonna go on these top grommets, of course, and it rests in there. And they'll wash all this down with some fresh water so there's no residue left behind here. And put everything back together. 
All right, for the next step, we're gonna bleed the system. We're gonna to wanna to put a battery tender on here or a charging unit or a power supply, uh, anything to keep the voltage up so it doesn't drain. While we bleed the coolant system, it's using an electronic coolant pump. It, it draws quite a bit of amperage and you're, you're gonna to wanna to run this for about five minutes to 10 minutes to bleed it. All right, to bleed the system, we're gonna turn the key on without starting it. And we're gonna put the blower, I usually put it all the way on low so it doesn't draw the battery too much. We're gonna put the heater all the way up. And I like to put it on the floor. Um, that's usually what the repair instructions say, um, but sometimes it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna try it with just leaving it as is, see if it'll activate. And I'm gonna hit the gas to all the way to the end for about 10 to 12 seconds and you should hear the pump kick on under the under the hood here let's see all right i can hear it working already you can hear the bubbles going through and what the heater being open does is it, of course cycles fluid through the heater core get all the bubbles out uh and through the whole coolant system actually so I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna show you what it's doing. And you can see it squirting there. The level is low because the level stick is at the bottom there, but there's enough coolant sufficient for the bleeding. Once it's done, I'll top it back off again, drive it, double check for leaks. Obviously, I'm gonna make sure the heater works and also the air conditioning, because that's the whole point why we're doing this repair um, on this particular vehicle. Those valves do leak. They do cause other issues um, for the need of replacing them. So this is a good video, kind of covers uh, everything here. All right, after about 10 minutes, take the charger off, uh, turn the key off, put the key back in, start it, let it warm up, and feel if it's getting heat down at the bottom, and it sure is, and turn the AC on, see if it's getting the AC on here, which it is on this one, and you're good to go. Thanks for joining me today, Mike MDs. I hope this has helped you out. Happy motoring to you.